Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today we're looking at a $70 budget Shieldred the Apocalypse deck tech. From Dominara United, this Phyrexian Praetor with Death Touch says whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. This deck is all about that card draw, drawing plenty ourselves to get that healthy life total and making our opponents draw so many cards they're drained for all their life or maybe even all their library. Now, let's get straight into the video. As always, we're starting off this deck tech hot with all that ramp. First with Decanter of Endless Water and Thought Vessel to our one mana of any colour and Colourless to our mana pool respectively, with them both having that card draw loving no maximum hand size text. We have Arcane Signet to add black and Mindstone to add Colourless with that secondary card draw sackable option. There's Dark Ritual to add three swamp to your mana pool and Wayfarer's Bauble to pay and sack to search your library for a swamp, putting it onto the field untapped. Of course, there are plenty of other budget mana rock choices if you want more ramp, but we're drawing so many cards, we're going for light and tight in this budget brew. And finally, we have Soul Ring, because Soul Ring. Before we get onto all of that card draw, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe down below for all things MTG. Subscribing is completely free to do, and it helps our channel grow and grow. If you're buying cards, then look no further than Card Market. You can also use our affiliate code when registering to help the channel that little bit more. You love to see it. Now we're looking at all of that card draw. Cards for you and your opponent. First on up we have Foreboding Fruit and Knight's Whisper to draw two cards and lose two life, with Foreboding Fruit allowing any player to be the target and can create you a tasty food token. We have more draw two lose two in Succumb to Temptation and Pointed Discussion, with the latter also creating you a blood token. Then yet another dose of draw two lose two with sign in blood and blood pact, both allowing for any player to be the target. As is expected, the more chances we have to get any card draw going, the more shield will trigger, gaining us life or draining our opponent. For the fourth and final part of draw two lose two, we have painful lesson and read the bones, with painful lesson hitting any target and read the bones targeting you, also letting you scry two. For our first wink on, we have Peer Into the Abyss to make target player draw cards equal to half of the number of cards in their library and lose half their life, rounded up each time. Make your opponents draw half their deck, lose half their life and trigger Shieldred to make them lose two life for each card drawn. That's one opponent down. And Promise of Power to draw five cards and lose five life. There's Liliana's Contract that ETBs drawing you four cards and losing you four life with another wink on if you control four demons with different names on your upkeep. And you bet we have a few fun demons in this deck. And Pain's Reward to bid any amount of life, with each player bidding in turn, ending when the high bid stands. The high bidder loses life equal to the high bid and draws four cards. We have Teferi's Puzzle Box that says at the beginning of each player's draw step, they put the cards in their hand on the bottom of their library in any order, then drawing that many cards. And Dark Deal that says each player discards all the cards in their hand, then drawing that many cards minus one. On to the X spells, we have Damnable Pact to have target player draw X cards and lose X life. Double Deadly if targeting your opponent. And Necrologia that you can only play on your end step. To cast you must pay any amount of life, drawing cards equal to the life paid this way. We have Howling Mind to make each player draw an extra card during their draw phase, and Master of the Feast, a flying demon that says at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent draws a card. There is another demon in Sykeson, Perverter of Truth, to make each player draw two cards and lose two life at the beginning of their upkeep, and Rankle, Master of Pranks, that when deals combat damage to a player, who can make everyone discard a card, lose a life and draw a card, and sack a creature. We want card draw to happen literally everywhere, so having cards for triggers on upkeep end step and everything in between is perfect. We have classic card Greed to pay a swamp and two life to draw a card and Fell Stinger that when exploits a creature, target player draws two cards and loses two life. There's Temple Bell that you can tap to make each player draw a card and Dread Presence this is whenever a swamp ETBs you may draw a card and lose one life. Onto the final five we have Clockwork Fox that when it leaves the field you draw two cards and each opponent draws a card. A Morbid Opportunist, this is whenever one or more of the creatures die, draw a card, triggering only once per turn. We have Blood Gift Demon, this is at the beginning of your upkeep, target player draws a card and loses one life. And Underworld Dreams, this is whenever an opponent draws a card, it deals one damage to that player. Finally, as demons and card draw sync so well, we have Cothafed, Soul Hoarder. It says whenever a permanent owned by another player is put into the graveyard from the field, you draw a card and lose a life. Also, it gets us one step closer to that lovely demon wincon. 
How devilishly disgusting. With all of this Shield Dread card draw life gain, we want more ways to benefit from that abundance of life that we're getting. First up is Burles' Citadel. We can use this extra life advantage to peek and cast non long cards from the top of our library by paying life instead of mana cost. With that extra naughty option to sack 10 permanents to make each opponent lose 10 life too. And Revenge of Ravens to gain us a life and ping our opponents for one whenever a creature attacks us or a planeswalker we control. There is another win con in Lix Mastery, a hexproof enchantment that says you can't lose the game. Whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. Whenever you lose life, for each one life you lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard. And when it leaves the field, you lose the game. Although this card is a big risk, if Shield Red is out, you're drawing through your entire deck, having that one big chance to play everything you need to get the win. And Erebos's Intervention, to give target creature minus X minus X until end of turn, you gain X life. We have Sanguine Bond and Veto the Dusk Rose that both say whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life, with Veto having that added option to give you a creature's lifelink until end of turn. We have another life gain and drain with Flying Vampire Defiant Bloodlord, an Epicure of Blood, this is whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. There's yet again another gain and drain for one opponent damage with Marauding Blight Priest and Bloodthirsty Aerialist, this is when you gain life, put a 1-1 counter on it. For the final two, we have Witch of the Moors, this is at the beginning of your end step, if you gain life this turn, each opponent sacks a creature and you return up to one target creature from your graveyard to your hand. And good old Gary, that when ETBs, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Before we finish up with those lovely, lovely lands, let's look at the best of the rest in this budget brew. First up is Merciless Executioner, that when ETBs, each player sacks a creature. And Playcrafter, to do the same, but players can also sack a Planeswalker. Those who can't, must discard a card. There's Dread Coco Demon, that when ETBs, if you cast it from your hand, destroy all creatures your opponents control, then tap all other creatures you control. And Fleshbag Marauder, for some more ETB creature removal. There's more removal in Murderous Rider, to destroy target creature or planeswalker, losing you 2 life. And Feed the Swarm, to destroy target creature or enchantment an opponent controls. You lose life equals that permanent's mana value. We want plenty of removal here. Our game plan is card draw heavy, rather than big board heavy. So keeping our opponent's army to a minimum, whilst we ping them to death, is crucial. There is more removal with Invoke Despair. Target opponent sacks a creature. If they can't, they lose 2 life and you draw a card. Repeating the process for an enchantment and planeswalker. And Baleful Mastery to exile target creature or planeswalker. If the cheaper casting cost was paid, an opponent draws a card. Even more card draw too, you love to see it. We've added Hero's Downfall to destroy target creature or planeswalker. And Infernal Grasp to destroy target creature, losing you two life. We have protection in Swiftfoot Boots to give a quick creature hexproof and haste, and Kai's Ghost Form that says when Enchanted Permanent dies or is put into exile, return that card to the field under your control. For our final three, we have some more Diabolical Demons. First is Archfiend of Depravity that says at the beginning of each opponent's end step, that player chooses up to two creatures they control, then sacrificing the rest. An Archfiend of Sorrows that when ETBs, creatures your opponent's control get minus two and minus two until end of turn. Finally, there's Dream Devourer that says each non-land card in your hand without Fortel has Fortel. The Fortel cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by 2. Dream Devourer gets plus 2 plus 0 whenever a card is foretold. As we always do, here we're finishing up this deck tech with all of those lands. In a channel first, with this being a budget deck and it being mono-coloured, this deck is coming at you with 36 basic swamp and that is it. Now, if you are looking to make those upgrades, then the next load of cards you're about to see are options that you can take out some of those basic swamps and replace them with. Some very expensive cards, some super super expensive ones, and some that are really cool, but to be honest, I just didn't fancy sticking Bajuka Bog in this one. Sorry Bajuka Bog. Sheldred is such a sick new commander from Dominaria United, and easily, in my opinion, the strongest from this exciting new set. I've said it a lot over the last two years, but I really mean this one. I'm definitely going to build myself a Shield Red Budget Brew if I pack it during my Dominaria United box opening next week. Friends in my playgroup, you better watch your back. There we have it, that is the Shield Red $70 Budget Brew. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe down below for all things MTG. Check out our link tree below for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out. So I'll see you in the next video.